Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Only use for ethical purposes, such as pen test, bug bounty, or writing assessment. Today, I'm going to show you how hackers can log in as any user and obtain remote access through a login screen. Let's get started. When you register an account on a website, your information is stored, such as your username and password, for you to log in later. Your information is stored in a database, typically a SQL database or SQL database. SQL stands for a Structured Query Language, and it's used to interact with the database. Here is an example of a way it is used to log in. The database may have a table called Users with two columns, a username and a password. To log in, a SQL query such as select all or the asterisk from users where username equals input username and password equals input the password is used. All commands are in the description, by the way, so you can copy paste them into your own notes. Now if we enter valid credentials such as pebble, that's our username, and password123 is our password, this would log us in as pebble. If I logged in using password 321 instead, it would not authenticate because our password doesn't match. Because of the AND operator, this means that both our username and our password need to match what's in the database. Let's think outside the box on how we can inject code into the SQL query. We will enter username admin with a quotation mark to escape the username string, and then use a double minus and a space to comment out the rest of the code. Now look what just happened. The query has changed to select all from users where username equals admin. We can now authenticate as admin, but this can go much further. We may not just be able to run any SQL query against the database, but we may also be able to get remote access to the web server. We first need to determine how many columns are in our table, as there may be just more than two as the username and password. We can test this using union select. We will use union select one two. If we see an error message in the output, we know that there are more than two columns. We can try adding a third. Still nothing, maybe a fourth. Now we see something different. It shows invalid credentials. No error was thrown. So now we know that there's four columns. Let's use this to create a web shell. First, we'll replace one with this PHP code for our PHP web shell and add it into file var www html shell php to write this php code into a file in the website called shell.php now if we browse to example.com slash shell.php question mark cmd equals who am i we can execute the who am i command we could replace who am i with any command if we wanted to there are four main types of sql mysql postgresql oracle sql and mssql or microsoft sql now let's pretend this is microsoft sql there is a MSSQL command called XPCMD shell, and this allows us to directly execute shell commands, but we first need to make sure we have the privileges to enable it. Let's go back to our working union select statement, and we'll replace one with is SRV role member sysadmin. If there's no error, then we can try to enable XPCMD shell. Let's change it back to one, add a semicolon at the end of our statement, and add a new one. We'll add exec sp configure show advanced options one and to apply it we'll run reconfigure now that advanced options have been enabled we can enable xpcmd shell with exec sp configure xpcmd shell one now run reconfigure again we should be able to execute shell commands let's try and ping our attacking machine we will show ping packets with sudo tcp dump dash i ton zero or whatever interface you're listening on protocol ICMP for ping. And now add exec xpcmd shell in quotation marks whatever command you want, such as ping your IP. If this works, then you can run any command in that cmd shell statement. Now I'm going to show you an example in context of a CTF. For this, we're going to use advent of cyber of last year, 2023, and the day 10, right here, inject the halls. But this is the website and there is a search area where we can search for gifts based on a person's budget their age and their interests uh, just like this and this is using a mssql database um, here are the columns adult or sorry age interests and budget and if we just say put a single quotation mark there that's going to throw us an error and we can see that database query error and that there's an unclosed string and so we know that there's some sort of SQL going on and we are able to inject into it. So let's start off trying to find the amount of columns we're working with. I'm assuming it's three, but we'll see.
Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay. Okay, okay. So those were... Alright. I'm brain dead. Okay, so yeah, these these were the columns. The age... The, the um... The, uh... The age, interest, and the budget. So we were just able to select one because we were... They were all, all the columns were already accounted for. Um, the age, interest, and budget. So right here, we can just select one and let's try and execute some commands. Like, so we'll just do one and then we'll execute commands. So we'll do, we'll do our is role member sysadmin. Okay. Invalid syntax. Oh, you put that in. Okay, never mind. You put that in here. You don't come in the statement. Uh, so you need to select this is said. Uh, we good? There we go. Okay, so we got one. So it didn't throw us an error, meaning we are sysadmin. So we are able to uh, enable MD shell. So let's enable advanced options. So you need to select one. And then in our new statement, we'll do they set in uh, exec SP configure, uh, show advanced options. All right. And then we see to reconfigure it. So let's put that in here. Reconfigure. Okay. Should have done it. And then let's exec SP configure CMD shell to enable CMD shell. There we go. All right. And then let's reconfigure again to apply it. Thank you. All right, that all looks good. All right, so let's see if uh, CMD shell worked. All right, so we're gonna set up this listener for pings, and we will try and exec CMD shell or XP CMD shell. So in quotation mark. So let's just try ping our IP 10.6.67.242. And you can see we're getting pings. So we just executed a ping on the web server. So we can control the web server. All right, so let's make this reverse shell. So I've pasted this in the description. You can always copy it into your notes. Um, so we're going to set that listener port for 80. That looks good. And we'll set the local host to our IP 6.67.242. Uh, that looks good. Again, this is an HTA PowerShell uh, reverse shell. Um, reverse TCP specifically. All right, so let's start up uh, Metasploit console. Take a bit to load. Metasploit. There we go. All right, so we're gonna search for HTA. There, first one, exploit Windows miscellaneous HTA server. This is index two, so we'll use two. There we go. Um, let's check our options. Okay, so this is a staged uh, reverse shell, meaning it's gonna fetch the file from a um, uh, from our web server, the the payload. So we need to set a, um, a, uh, a web server up. So I'll set serve host to our IP. Uh, so there we go. And then set, um, our, our server port 3080 is fine. Um, let's set our local host to 10.6.67.242. There we go. And then let's set our our local port to we set it to for 80, I believe. Okay. So now let's exploit this. There we go. So we are hosting this HTA file on a web server at port 880. So we're gonna fetch that using XCMD shell. So we can use mshta.exe to um, get the HTA file and then just specify our um, web server. So 
10.6, that's 6.7, uh, 2.42, 4880, and here I'll just copy this. That is. Slash this file, and that should run. Delivering payload, sending the stage, sending the payload, and we got a interpreter session opened. So we can do sessions, and we see we have this active session as this MSSQL SQL server. Um, so we'll sessions one, and who am I? I gotta do shell. So interpreter has its own stuff, right? You can record a microphone, webcam, um, uh, dump hashes, all the passwords on the computer, a uh, bunch of bunch of fun stuff, download files, upload files. But what we're focused on is shell. Who am I? We are the SQL service. We have remote access. Um, we can go to C users. Or see all the users. We have admin access, administrator. Or I guess we do. We do have administrator access. So we're on the administrative desktop. You can do whatever you want. You see a note? What is that? I note.txt. Okay, it's the hash for the box. I'll leave that uh, uh, straight out. All right, something else I would like to add is how to automate this. Now, it doesn't always work, and I always advise to do it manually because you're going to learn a lot more. You're going to understand how SQL actually works, and sometimes uh, automating it can really mess up a system. But a great tool to use is SQL Map, and I'm going to show you how to use that for this example. So we'll just um, open up Burp Suite to capture the uh, get request for the, um, the present search. Let Burp Suite load up. Here we are. All right, so let's go again. Nope. All right, I gotta go port. There we go. Okay, gotta kill port 8080. So I'm not going on it. So let turn on my proxy. Um, we'll intercept and search. There we go. So we have this get request. We're going to copy this. And we're going to put it into a file. So let's nano. Um, we'll just call this get.txt. Paste that in there. Alrighty. And then we'll just do SQL uh, SQL map dash R for the file uh, get.txt. And it's going to automate this whole process. So let's do yes. Yes, default. Let this thing go. Age is injectable. Do we want to keep testing others? Let's not. Let's just use age. And um, we can see that it is uh, vulnerable. So we see that it's vulnerable. So let's get a uh, reverse shell with it. So we'll do dash dash os dash shell to our command. And there we go. Who am I? Standard output's fine. And we see we are the SQL service. So I hope you've learned something today. Get out there, do the advent of cyber uh, last year for uh, day 10 for SQL injection. Do it manually. Don't do the SQL map. Um, learn SQL. It's uh, very important for cybersecurity. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.